Hi everyone, it's Ray from Ray Life Coaching and I just want to go through how I pretty much start a new habit. That's really what we're talking about here. So um, what I do is I break the habit down really, really small and I would suggest, but you can do it whatever works for you. I would suggest taking a whole week at least for one very small habit and breaking it down into seven parts. So some of the things you want to consider that have helped me and obviously i source from all different uh sources on this um which is grouping your new habit with something you already do so first off if you're going to start off with the visualization which i would suggest starting off there with this um magnetic smile guide to connection because it also will help you with the process. It, it, the visualization in itself is a journaling exercise and a visualization of getting you there to where you want to go and knowing what your why is. So that is why I'd say start there first. But starting there might be very difficult for some of you. Um, the easiest way that I've experienced meditating, which is really what this is, is literally rolling out of bed <laughs> in the morning, because that's the first thing I do is wake up, right, in the morning. So I can group it like that um, by rolling out of bed and literally sitting on the floor, you know, maybe taking a pillow and propping it underneath my butt and sitting, having that whatever phone beside you and clicking on it. But how do you do that? You first have to remember to do it. You have to have your phone already prompted to get there. You have to maybe have a silent space in your bedroom and not interrupt others or they're not interrupting you. So there's many factors that might be involved in you not being able to do it that way. But that was the easiest way that I learned how to meditate every morning um, in the beginning. Of course, I had all those factors already in line ahead of time. So I'm going to give you some suggestions on how to pretty much uh, add a habit to your life in a way that will make you feel a little bit better. Like, oh, wow, I did that because it's like small, tiny increments. So um, I'm going to show you my little uh, journal here and at, I'm pretty much going to tell you what it, what it is. Um, weekly goal, let's say start visualization. So day one, I'm going to break this up into three, uh, seven days. It doesn't have to exactly be in this order, but it kind of gives you an idea. Day one, go to bed at 10 p.m. So if I want to wake up at six and do this visualization, then I need to be sleeping on time and get enough sleep, right? So it might mean that you have to do things ahead of time that don't seem related to the actual habit, but will help you do the habit much easier the way you think you want to do it. Okay, so go to bed at 10 p.m. I want to wake, and then the next day, wake up at 6 a.m. So you're still doing day one's thing, and then you're going to do add day two thing to day one, right? So you're going to like, okay, so the next Maybe it's Monday and you go to sleep at 10, 10 p.m. The next day, you don't have to add that thing. You just the next day do 10 p.m. And then what is kind of the third day, but now in our minds, the second day, you have done 10 p.m. twice in a row now. Now you're going to wake up at 6 a.m. the next morning. And day three, maybe you brush your teeth. Whatever you do in the morning that can prompt you in your head, oh, I'm going to do now the visualization right after or whatever it is. So I'm just giving you like a stereotypical thing most people do, which is brush their teeth um, or go to the bathroom or get some water. Whatever you do in the morning, maybe you go to the bathroom and you're like, okay, I did that. But first, after that, it prompts me to say, okay, what else do I need to get myself to visualize? What, how do I need to prepare the space and the environment in such a way that I actually want to be there? So 
for instance, when I rolled out of, out of bed to do my meditation in the morning, I already had an, an environment that was set to like enough to sit there that was quiet enough. So you need to find that space. So I would suggest the third day after you do that thing that you normally do right after you wake up, then that will prompt you to set up the space in the environment or at least choose the environment and figure out what you need in that environment for you to do it right after, okay? Um, then day four, maybe do all those three things again and day four, put a reminder in like right, right next to you, either on the mirror where you brush your teeth or wherever you're going to, wherever you're going to be on day, day three in brushing your teeth or doing that thing that you do right after, put it right in front of you, like a note or, um, you know, put it on the calendar, like do some reminders, have your phone ring or, you know, alarm, something that will be obvious right after you've done that habitual thing um, that is supposed to also cue you, but then you also have another reminder. Um, day five, put clothes by your bedside. This is another thing. Like if, if you're creating a habit that requires you to show up in a certain way, not just in your environment, but you have to show up, what is it that you have to do to show up in that way? Maybe you're your habit is to go to that, that networking thing. Okay. Prepare your clothes in advance, you know, prepare something in, in advance to set you up. So that's day five, day six, put on your clothes. <laughs> so it's like, and sit on your pillow, you know, like do those little incremental things. Maybe you're not actually going to the networking, but you're preparing yourself, um, for that thing. And then um, you're sitting on the mat after you have brushed your teeth or gone to the bathroom. That's day six. Day seven, you're actually doing all of those things. You're day one, you're going to sleep at 10 p.m. You're waking up at 6 a.m. And then you have that habit and you're setting up your space after that habit. Um, day four, you already have the reminder in place for yourself, day five, um, you have all of the prepared clothes and you put on the clothes day six and you sit on your mat, that's day six, and day seven, you meditate and you do the visualization. You have it already prompt up. So um, even day six could be like having your phone right beside the mat and setting it to the visualization right away, you know, just having that all set up um, in some way. So th these are like incremental steps to help you along the way. And as you start doing them, they become small, tiny habits stacked on top of each other. Um, and remember, you're going to forget, <laughs> you're going to have excuses. And so, um, that's why I sent you that, how to stay steady on your, um, your change and your habit. And so look at that and just maybe even print it out and put it as a reminder in front of you, you know, have that be your reminder of like, okay, yeah, I have to um, pretend I have amnesia and, you know, put reminders everywhere or have someone call me and tell me to, uh, have you done that yet? Tr try, try to be your own, you know, best friend and um, be compassionate with yourself because Changing a habit is hard. It's very, very difficult. And that's why I say spread it out. Seven days is actually not long for something that you want to continue for the rest of your life, right? So keep with it. If you find that the first step on day one is just really difficult, expand it into day uh, to seven days. That's okay. There is nothing wrong with that because going to sleep at 10 p.m. might be extremely difficult or whatever it is that you need to do that you think will help you get to that end game of meditating for who knows how long. Okay, good luck everybody. I'm just so curious as to how this works for you and maybe some suggestions you might have that are working for you.
Yay. Let me know. <laughs>